it's been a while since I've really sat down and spent some time with myself. How about you? Have you spent any time with yourself lately? I'm specifically thinking about when there's nothing else. I'm not talking about napping or resting or just chilling or relaxing or other kinds of those kinds of Zen activities like taking a bath, meditating, yoga. I mean more like just sitting with the sense of the self, like the, the mental and physical components that come together and make you feel like you without other activities, so to speak. And I guess this is like a specific kind of self that's like self-referential and just existing. Um, it is sort of like, maybe sort of like meditating, meditation, but just maybe it's like mindfulness where you're just being in the moment, present, noticing what's happening. Um, I don't know. It could be a lot of things. People, people say things, you know. So yeah, just we can sit here and be with ourselves, I suppose. This moment made possible by years of physical therapy and essentially what I'm trying to say is that this would not be possible, whatever this is, without a moment free from pain and free from from suffering. What a word that is, suffering. <laughs> when I was a kid, back in the olden days, the parents would say, if you ever cried, they'd say, you better stop crying or I'll give you something to cry about. That's a threat, by the way. And um, the varying degrees of punishment, depending on your situation, would be, oh, you know, you can use your imagination. It's not something we need to dwell on, really. But the idea being that you and your problems and your feelings and your life and your situation as a child are not valid and not important. And in fact, existing and having an experience of being yourself is not acceptable. And so what do you do? Because guess you, you do exist as a child. Um, you know you're there. You're aware of yourself. You can see and you can feel your own body. So that's a fact, right? And um, you know that you exist interdependently in family systems or whatever your arrangement might have been, whether it's an immediate biological family or something else. But there are very few people who've lived, I mean, I think there are a few people who were raised by wolves, humans who've been raised by animals. Um, and there's a small fraction of people that live alone off the land. But for the most part, we're all in communities and we all depend on each other. And 
especially when you're young and vulnerable as a child, you have no uh, recourse but to rely on the people who are older than you and who are able to navigate the world uh, more effectively to get those resources that you need. And so we all make that choice of, do I show up as myself and face violence, possible death, excommunication, you know, depending on how young your parents might kick you out, it could be, it could be rough, it could be scary. And, or do I just shove it all down inside and hide and bide my time, you know? And we call that trauma nowadays, so. I have not been to trauma therapy or anything like that, really. And I know that it's, uh, I think most people probably would benefit from some kind of uh, <laughs> most people are dysfunctional is the fact. And most people are just barely keeping it together from day to day. And most people will try to hide that from other people because we have society that's built largely upon a facade of well-being. You know, it's the wellness industry. Uh, we're all going through this major transition of evolution from a from a tribalistic organizing unit to an individualistic unit and then to a more interconnected holistic unit that's kind of where we're headed um, where we come into and out of contact with people sort of on a, I don't know what frequency, but it's rap feels rapid. It feels quick. Whereas in the old tribal paradigm, you know, we're, we're just in, you know, when you're in, you're in the mafia, you know, in the tribe, you're in, that's it. There's, you, you don't get out. <laughs> There's no getting out. You're just in it. Uh, some people will individuate, escape out of that and become these individuals. You know, this, this, this is the American dream. And um, it's a myth, you know, it's not real. The, I think I once heard it described as the myth of the, like the rugged American individualism. You know, I can make it on my own, right? BS. It's complete BS, by the way. But but we like to believe. And when we do feel like we're making it on our own, it's a fun game to pretend. Ah, uh, yes, I've got this. Look at me. And um, definitely can separate ourselves from others in that way. But... I seem to come back around to this theme often. And the theme, it's, it, it is collective trauma. And there is good people working on that right now. So like uh, Thomas Hubel and co, that comes to mind. There's a whole grouping of that. Um, people like Charles Eisenstein, um, who has his own little thing going on that comes to mind. Um, of course, all the people under that umbrella of trauma and trauma healing. I'm sure there's lots of lots of you out there. That's that's good. Um, it's a slow process of emergence. I don't know much about it. I haven't had conversations with people about it. I haven't felt like it. I haven't wanted to, and that's okay. You know, we're we're all wherever we are at in our journey and. There's no rush, you know, 
um, for me personally, and that's just me, any kind of pressure that I put on myself is counterproductive. Just, in fact, has the opposite effect. The more pressure that I put on myself, the longer it, it actually takes to get things done. And the less pressure I put, the freer the system is and the more efficiently it operates. Um, maybe it didn't always work that way for other people in different times in history. Maybe it doesn't work that way now for everyone. Maybe some people really genuinely thrive under lots of pressure. Um, and at what cost, I would ask. That excellence and um, that skill that allows you to stand out from all your peers in competition, at what cost? So yeah, I'm sitting here with myself, got boogers in my nose, and um, it's quiet for a change. It's quiet. Wow. <laughs> it's amazing, actually. That must be why I'm having this kind of moment, right? Because it's actually quiet. But. question that I've been asking myself since like 12 years ago was how can I be of service and to the world and just in my life in general and um, I just have not really even begun to approach that the years have gone by I'm going gray and I haven't even begun to approach it you know so I marvel at folks who are able to live a life of service from the time that they're in their teenage years or 20s or even 30s. I don't know how people do it and find the courage to do that. Um, but in my life, you know, I've been dealt some pretty crappy hands, you know, and uh, just making the best of it. Uh, what can I say? You know, it hasn't been that way for me that I've been able to show up in the world and put all of this good, <laughs> good human material to, to use, you know, to put it to work. It's here, it's available. And yet um, the inner work of, I guess, what I would call to me what feels like psychological, social, genetic trauma. It's all about that for me. It's like the social trauma, the self-inflicted human wound that has really limited or inhibited me from growing. And um, What can I, what can you really say about that? There's not much to be said besides just get up every day and do your best. Um, when you align yourself with the, I guess you would call it something like the collective or the greater good, or in that sense, um, can be very difficult to find an individual pathway. Um, Personally, it's like I feel haunted, trapped, weighed down, boxed in by these phantoms, these old ghosts and forces of conditioning, you know, like social conditioning that you can't really go with it and you can't really go against it. You just have to 
show up as yourself. And it's so challenging to do that when, first of all, who are you, right? Second of all, every other human being that shows up in your life is a reflection of some aspect of you. And the ones that really piss you off are like the most unresolved aspects of yourself. And what do you do? You push them away and say, never mind, that's not part of my life. I'm going in a different direction. Do you just coexist as best as you can? Uh, get a restraining order? You know, like what's the solution there? Um, we don't live in a utopia and we're not all getting along and it's not kumbaya. And people are scared. People are angry. People are sad. People are frustrated. People are overwhelmed. There's so much under the surface that's just weighing us down as individuals, as a species. Um, and <sighs> it's a lot. It's a lot. And not everyone feels that and not everyone thinks about that and not everyone is like attached or connected to that. Um, I seem to be. And um, I think the refrigerator is buzzing and I don't really want to record anymore because of that. It's just a loud and irritating sound and it's going to screw up the audio on the video, if that makes sense. So. Well, I'm going to go try and find something to do with the rest of my day. I know there's going to be lots of cooking involved and eating food, but other than that, let's hope that there's some beneficial or fun, productive or whatever activity that is going to happen. Because I'm feeling like I do have a couple hours of energy in me right now that I could use for some kind of good. So. who probably will just throw this one up again without editing it and without doing any timestamps. And I know that <laughs> this is not um, the ideal way of going about YouTube. Like it's, it's really minimal, low effort and uh, it is what it is. So bye.